are concerned about this bill, perhaps of all the bills that have taken away the governor's power, this one actually will, could potentially hurt the people of Hawaii the most. And I'm going to kind of summarize the Attorney General's uh, testimony as well as um, the director of DAGS. The bill would turn the clock on emergency management law in Hawaii back 57 years and significantly hamper the governor's ability to respond to emergencies and disasters. Sections 127-1 to 127-9 in the Hawaii Revived Statutes have been suspended since 1951. And for the last 57 years, virtually all of the governor's emergency management powers and capabilities have been found primarily in Chapter 128 of the Hawaii Revised Statutes. This bill effectively terminates that suspension for this governor only, leaves the governor with two very separate and distinct chapters for emergency management and dangerously hampers the governor's ability to respond to emergencies and disasters. Basically, it severely limits the governor and the governor's ability to exercise emergency power for disasters not caused by an enemy attack. This means that the governor will be limited in almost all disasters as enemy attacks fortunately seldom occur. It is impractical for the governor to first find and declare through an emergency proclamation that tangible and measurable harm or damage has resulted as a consequence of the disaster and that the disaster relief could not otherwise be achieved through legislation enacted in the next regular session of the legislature or special section of the legislature called by the governor for the purpose of providing such relief. This would therefore, Mr. Speaker, preclude the governor from exercising the governor's emergency powers for imminent potential disasters, such as a hurricane coming or a tsunami coming. The governor would need to wait until the disaster occurs before putting all the people in place to protect the people of Hawaii. And in the aftermath of the disaster, the governor would need to find and declare the tangible and measurable harm and determine if relief could re be achieved through legislation. So in other words, this bill would make her, before she does anything and calls out um, the Department of Defense and all the people that would help the people of Hawaii, you're making her come back to us. So all our Idaho Island reps are going to have to come back from where they are, and we're going to have to call a special session before helping the people of Hawaii. If so, the governor would be compelled, again, to call the special session, as I mentioned. Meanwhile, whatever harm has occurred would remain, and any health and safety problems will fester until the legislature passes the appropriate legislation. In an emergency, the governor, as both the chief executive and commander-in-chief of the state, must be able to take action as swiftly as the situation warrants. This bill would prevent the governor from acting on the advice of experts in disaster prevention and response from ensuring the health and safety of the state's citizenry. In addition to hindering the governor from taking timely action, this bill would create problems for the governor even when the governor is able to provide disaster relief without legislation. In these cases, Mr. Speaker, the relief that is provided would terminate at the end of the next legislative session unless the legislature adopts a concurrent resolution or enacts a law to authorize the continued disaster relief. This would be disruptive as relief projects often take over a as relief projects, excuse me, often take over a year to complete and precious resources would be diverted to justifying the continuance rather than continuing of the relief. There may be dozens or hundreds of projects involved to help the people of Hawaii. There may also be impacts on cost recovery and federal and state aid. For those reasons, Mr. Speaker, I just simply cannot support this bill that would truly hurt the people of Hawaii.